Reading on a Kindle can turbocharge your learning, recall, and utilization of what you consume and read. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the pro tips on how to take better highlights and better notes in the books that you read, as well as ways to integrate those notes into your second brain system like Notion, where you can then utilize more of that information you consume. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about taking better notes on your Kindle, top tips for highlights and what to highlight and what not to, ways to get those notes and highlights into a better system for then using that information or recalling that information, as well as using more of what you've learned in order to create your own content. One of my pet peeves about people taking notes in the margins of books is when they just say pithy things like love this or this is a cool idea that means absolutely nothing and creates no discourse between you and the author. The way to take notes in a book, whether this is in Kindle or in the margins of a paper book even, is to generate ideas that you can then spin off for yourself. So this could be a key place to highlight things like lists or ideas that you then want to run off and extrapolate on. Authors really want you to be able to start that dialogue and discourse with their ideas and help you to generate your own ideas rather than just making pointless comments in the margins or with the notes feature in the Kindle. Now, one of the nice things about reading on an iPad or a Kindle Scribe or other e-reader that's got note-taking capabilities like that is the ability to handwrite your notes. And that's one of the reasons why if I'm in, and that's one of the reasons why if I'm reading a book where I've got a lot more depth to go into or I'm trying to pull a lot of information out of, I'm going to use an iPad more than just the Kindle Paperwhite so that I can take those notes with the Apple Notes in a floating note on top of the page rather than just the simple notes within the, the Paperwhite. Now for less important notes or books that I'm reading, I'm totally fine with just taking those simple notes and typing on the screen of the Kindle itself. Even though it's a slow process, there's nothing wrong with that because you really want to absorb and take the time to make use of the information and think about the information you're reading. I don't see any benefit in trying to speed read through everything that I consume. Now, one of the biggest pro moves that you can make if you read on Kindle or on an iPad or any other e-reader device or even paper books is to get Readwise. Now, if you haven't heard of Readwise before, it's basically a way to sync all of your book notes and across different devices, but I love the way that it works with Kindle especially into whatever sort of knowledge management system you use, or sometimes as we call them, second brains. And I love to use Notion for this. I'll talk about a couple of the key features that make this a game changer when it comes to book notes and making use of that information. But just know that Readwise helps you to recall more as well as make use of more of those notes that you capture in books. So with Readwise, you can automatically sync book notes into your second brain like Notion. And as well with the Reader, which is their app that allows you to capture all of your newsletters and articles that you wanna read later. They've now just recently released a send to Kindle feature for the Reader app, which allows you to send collections of newsletters once a week or once a day to your Kindle, or also manually send one at a time any of the articles or newsletters that you wanna read so that you can read them on an e-ink screen. And if you don't have Readwise or don't wanna pay the subscription, it's like $12 a month in Canada. So I think it's like $9.99 in the States for Readwise, which is well worth it to get those daily highlights of your book notes, as well as this automatic syncing and importing into whichever notes app you want to make use of or knowledge management system. But you can do this manually with your Kindle notes as well. So any of the Kindle notes and highlights that you take that you want to send into 
another system or another place to store all of your book notes. I find that the Kindle app is the best way to do it rather than trying to send them from your Kindle itself. So download this on your phone or on your computer or an iPad and then use the export feature in the app to send them all at once when you're done reading the book. The great thing is this feature also works for any EPUBs on your Kindle that you didn't purchase in the Kindle store. And those notes will also sync across devices. So if you're reading on multiple devices, once you're done reading the book, you can sync and send all of those notes from your EPUBs to wherever you store all of your book highlights and notes. And if you do have Readwise, you can use the ad at readwise.io email once you've incorporated or synced that with your Kindle account to be able to send those and automatically sort them so that you've got the highlights and the notes in the formatting that you want as well. Now, a couple of pro highlighting tips. First, if you do use Readwise, one of the habits that I've gotten into that's super useful is to always tag the headings and subheadings as well as the parts to the book with the .h1, .h2, and .h3 tags for parts, chapters, and subsections. This is going to create your own table of content for the books that you've read for when you send them over to whatever system you want. And Notion is particularly good at this because you've got that table of contents you can scroll through really quickly on the side of the screen. And I find that this is useful both for understanding the structure and your own sort of created version of the table of contents of the books that you read, but also for learning how authors have structured the information in their book, which makes it better for memory and recall, but also makes it better for understanding how they've written their book so that you can know and make use of that information in a way to when you go and either want to teach that information or structure your own understanding of the world, you now have developed this sense of what makes a great book and a great book structure. And the other great pro tip with notes and highlights with Readwise is using .c1, .c2, and so on as a way to chain together different bits of highlights. So if you're reading a long passage and you want it as just one single highlight, you start by highlighting that first piece using .c1, and then the next piece, you know, maybe there's several sentences or several paragraphs that you don't really want to highlight as much. Use .c2 in that next section that really stands out, and it'll chain them together so that when you export those highlights, into whatever system, it's all going to be one piece of that memory or that piece of information that you want to use. So now what if you don't use Readwise again? What are some of the pro tips I find with highlighting? Make sure that you don't just highlight entire pages of the books that you're reading. So that's one of the rules that I learned from Tim Ferriss a long time ago was limit those highlights. Like if you see that you're constantly highlighting an entire page of text, it's too much because it's really then not meaningful for you. What are the things that actually stand out that are going to be useful, whether it's generating new ideas or new creative thoughts for you, or it's something that you find unexpected that is in the book. Rather than just highlighting all the obvious stuff because it's one of those sort of Instagrammable quotes that you think you need to show off. You can also do this when you review your highlights afterwards, rather than just constantly checking with yourself when you're reading and in the flow of reading. So go back through and review your highlights if you don't have something like Readwise that's going to help you to do that, so that you are double checking and really drawing in what are the things that generate that curiosity or interest to explore further for you? Now that's all great. We've taken good book notes, we've taken good highlights, and if whether we're integrating with Readwise or we're just manually exporting our notes and highlights ourselves, how do we use more of what we've read and what we've learned? Reading endlessly without taking action on the information is such a waste. And I've been guilty of that myself 
for a long time. And that's why I constantly try to remind myself not to chain smoke books and just start up the, la the next one when I've finished the last one. Instead, I like to pause to digest and reabsorb what I've just finished reading and find ways that I can make use of this, whether it's incorporating it into new pieces of content that I am writing or creating videos on, or different ways that I can share that information and teach it to others. Find ways to tell stories about the people in the books that you've read or create listicles of the different things that you've learned from the table of contents that you've created or those subcategories so that you can share and, and really show that you've understood and learned this information. So as I mentioned, we want to make use of the information that we've read to tell different stories about the interesting people or characters we've read about and lessons that you've learned that you can turn into listicles or observations or contrarian viewpoints or just ideas that you want to expand upon for your own knowledge and spreading it or sharing it, whether you like to write blog posts or send newsletters or create videos or tweets or whatever. And this is one of the reasons why I love Notion so much, especially the, the AI features that are within Notion. And so what we're gonna do is just as an example of creating like a new note, I wanna show you that we can use some of the AI features to pull information from the books that we've read or articles. And so a couple of examples using the Notion AI, we can ask it to, you know, one of the books that I read recently was, was Matthew McConaughey's biography or autobiography or memoir, or whatever you want to call it, Green Lights. And we can get some ideas, maybe when we want to share the top ideas from Matthew McConaughey that were in green lights. And using Notion AI, we can say something like, you know, what are the what are the main lessons or takeaways from green lights? And what Notion's AI is able to do is go into the information that you've highlighted specifically rather than just the general ideas. So it becomes more about what was meaningful and important to you. And we can get these ideas based on my highlights of things like what we learned from green lights. And then, you know, I like to kind of just take all of this information and paste it as kind of the starting point. And then those lessons that we have, you know, become a way to create, you know, a listicle that can be like lessons from Matthew McConaughey or whatever kind of we want to structure this as, and it can be like that listicle format, or that can then become the different sections for a longer form piece of content as well. So another example we can do is also after watching the um, after watching the document or after watching the Netflix series um, Owning Manhattan with Ryan Serhan, I went and read his book, which is like a sales book and sort of mainly I guess about sales and also about like real estate and and sort of his story as well. So we could also say you know the same sort of thing. What are the main lessons from what are the main lessons from Salt Lake Sirhan? And we can get this other idea. And these are great pieces of content or great ideas to share from what stood out to you again in these books that you've read. And sometimes it'll come up with things saying like it doesn't have specific information about the main lessons, but you know, we still have these key insights that came from the book and that's, that's okay that like, you know, that initial message from the AI isn't exactly um, relevant to that, but we do still get those key 
messages in the book. So those are some of the pro tips on taking book notes and highlights with Kindle, as well as on any other e-reader or iPad, if you're reading on your iPad, that I think are really useful for getting more out of what you read, particularly, you know, if you're trying to extract lessons from fiction. But I think, I think more importantly, this is useful information if you read a lot of nonfiction and you get caught up in reading book after book, but not taking any action on what you read. This is a great process for understanding more from each of the books that you read, as well as utilizing more of the information that you learn. So I hope you find that really useful. And if you want to check out more on how to get into flow and reading, check out this video next.